Okay, so I'm going to do the problems um, from the exam. This is mostly so you can look at your work and see, oh, what did I do right or what did I do wrong? Um, it's probably helpful to watch all of the problems just so you can see them done. It'll help solidify the concepts. I'm assuming that as a student you care about, you know, learning and how you're going to do these problems in the best way possible. I saw some things on the exam that were a little concerning. Um, so if you have questions, you can always ask me. Um, there's more than one way to do some problems. One, but there were some things that um, definitely needed to be noted. Don't use x as a multiplication symbol. I'm going to have to start taking off for that because that is not good in the algebra world. Um, that's very confusing because we use x as a variable so often. So um, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and also make sure you show all your work. Now, I'm going to show you the way that I did the problems, and um, hopefully the easiest way. In some problems, there's not always an easiest way or a not easiest way, but um, here we go. Okay, so this first problem had to do with the order of operations. Uh, so we're going to do the exponent part first. So that's going to be 3 times 9, using the parentheses to indicate multiplication. Where does this come from? That's negative 3 squared which means negative 3 times negative 3. Okay, that's where the 9 comes from. Then you have minus, and then this is 2 times negative 3, which is a negative 6. You can write it that way, plus 5. You also could have written just uh, plus 6, because it's going to be that in a minute anyway, but I didn't. So 3 times 9 is 27, plus 6, plus 5. Uh, minus and minus 6 is plus 6. 27 plus 6 is 33. And 33 plus 5 is going to get me 38. And I'm going to put a box around my answer, and I'm kind of out of room. Okay. Graph the following equation. Identify the x and y intercepts. Um, one way you could have done this would have been with a table of values. So you didn't have to do it that way. It didn't specify that in the directions. Um, you could have used slope and intercept, but... Uh, I'll just show you how to do a table of values real quick. So I usually like to pick at least one negative, zero, and one positive number. That's not always possible for every equation, but um, here I can. So if I put in a negative one, and then I follow the order of operations, I'm going to get 2 plus 6, which is 8. Okay, so that represents an ordered pair, negative 1, 8. I don't usually take the time to write it out, but um, you could. That I'll be graphing. So negative 1, 8 is going to be right there. Now I'm going to plug in 0. The squiggly line isn't particularly exciting. Um, just separates the problems. Okay, and I get y equals 6. That's another point. 0, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I'm going to put in 1, y equals 2, oops, is it negative 2, times 1 plus 6. Negative 2 plus 6, or negative, oops, not negative, positive 4. So 1, 4 is going to be right there. This should be a linear equation. The points line up, and so we draw the line. Please put arrows at the end to show that it continues in both directions. That's the graph. Now, it says identify the x and y intercepts. The x-intercept, uh, let me see if I can switch colors here. The x-intercept is going to be right there. You can just write it. Um, the x-intercept is, let's see, it looks like 4 to me. Um, let's see, to find it, it should be, it's my line's off, it should be to find the x-intercept, I'm going to write over here because I have a little more room, you're going to let y be 0, and then you would have to solve that. So I think my graph's off a little bit, but subtracting 6 from both sides, you'd get negative 6 equals negative 2x, divided by negative 2, and you would get x equals 3. So that is the x-intercept. You can just put 3. I usually put it as an ordered pair, but um, that's not a big deal to me. I see it both ways in the textbooks. The y-intercept is right here. You already found it when you let y be, or when you let x be 0. So the y-intercept, and I do usually just abbreviate that, is going to be the point 0, 6. And on your graph, it's right there. But this was the answer when I said identify. I was looking for something like that. Okay. I'm trying to 
talk quickly so this video won't be too long. You can always stop the video. This is an equation. It's linear. Um, there's We just want to solve it. So we're going to distribute. And so we're going to get 8x plus 12 minus x. No, it's not an x. I was thinking ahead. Minus x minus 8. That's distributing the minus sign. Sometimes students forget to do that, and that's like a really big deal. Distribute that negative sign. It's distributing the 2 here. You're going to get 2x minus 2 minus 29. Now, we're going to combine the terms that we can on the left. Uh, let's see. We're going to get 7x plus 4. That 12 and negative 8 is going to be 4. And then on the right, we're going to have 2x minus 31. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides. You might have written the work differently, but this is one way that I see a lot of. Um, we get negative 31 over here. Now, subtract the 4. So this is solving a linear equation. Uh, negative 35. And then dividing by 5, we should get, I'm just going to go over here, x equals negative 7. For our purposes, you can just write it that way. I'm not going to worry about set notation and things like that. Okay, is that it for the first page? Great. Um, there you go.